Welcome to Seth Craft. I just opened up the Gloofy all-in-one 20 watt laser engraving machine. The company sent this laser so that I could test out and let you know what I think about it and give you an overview and basic operations of the machine. Whenever I unboxed this, it was shipped very tight and secure with a lot of foam and there was zero damage to the machine. There are several things included with this laser engraver. First of all, you have a hose here. It's about four foot long and that will allow you to vent the fumes outside. It has a user manual and some cardboard, also a couple of little pieces of wood that you can use to test out the engraving or cutting. This has a AC to DC power adapter so you can plug it up to the wall. It's got a USB cable. Let's see what the length is here. It's about three foot long and that will go to your computer. It's got an adapter sleeve so you can connect to the machine and that exhaust pipe. There is a little kit of hardware and also a couple of things that you can engrave on in there. Uh, here is the laser module itself. We'll get into that here in just a moment. A honeycomb cutting base is also included. Now, I'll have to uh, pull off this blue film, but that will allow the laser to uh, not cut through the bottom of the housing here. And then lastly, this unit does come with the air assist pump to help with uh, the engraving. So let's take a closer look here at the machine itself. This is the 20 watt all-in-one laser engraver from Gloofy. There's the logo right there. So here is your power button to turn on the laser. There is an emergency stop over here. You have to uh, twist that in order to bring it up. Once it's pressed in, it's gonna stop the machine. We'll get to that in a moment. Over here is where the exhaust is going to be. And it's kind of hard to see. There you go. It's got those slits in there that will allow the air to pass through. We step down here, you can see there is the USB to computer and there is your power in. A little bit of information on safety. Over here is blank. Now the housing is a plastic, which makes it lightweight for shipping, but also for having to pick this unit up and move it around. The lid is made of a uh, green plastic and that's going to block the laser light so it's not going to be harming your eyes. You can lift this up. There is a foam up here that will uh, help this make a better seal against the case. Now, if you move in here, this is where the laser is going to attach. It does have a uh, automatic adjustment for the Z axis. Cable management, it does have a nice chain here to protect those cables from getting twisted or pinched. Now, this back here, I'll have to see how well the air assist tube is going to stay out of the way. Hopefully it does a good job back there. Now over here on this side, there is a filter. So I can actually pull this up and show it to you. The concept behind this is that it will pull out smoke and debris and hopefully reduce the uh, particles that are in the air. Uh, there's also a nice size fan back there. Now, I have an exhaust system that I will likely be using, and it also will uh, pull out uh, from a four inch tube there, and it goes outside right there. So I will be hooking up uh, this to that tube instead of using the included one here. And that way it should get all of that uh, smoke out of this building. The air assist input is over here on this side in the bottom corner. Let's begin the assembly of this laser. Now the instruction booklet is very vague on what's going on. It has more information on how to install the tube for the exhaust, but nothing about how to install the laser. So just taking a look at the laser here, it's got a couple of screw holes here on the side of this uh, Z axis. And there is a thumb screw, which must go in the upper right hand corner because this is what's going to activate this limit switch over here. So I'm just going to set this module in place and then get this thumb screw uh, screwed in here. And that will be the first thing that I install on this unit. Make sure that's tight. That also allows me to use 
these super small screws here to get these installed for the rest of the support here. The autofocus rod has a wire coming out of it. I'm gonna attach that wire right up here. And then the other side of this is gonna connect right over here. And now this right here is gonna be the control wire that goes into the top of the laser. There's also a rubber stopper I'm going to pull out right here. And that's where the air assist hose is going to go. There we go. That's pretty easy to do. The air assist tube that goes on the outside of the machine is going to stick over here into this uh, little hole. And I just, is a press fitting. And then on the air assist pump, I'm gonna remove this rubber stopper. There we go. And then connect this tube onto this side. And now this can just be plugged up to the wall. Seems to work well. Turn that off for now. I found out that it's important to put the honeycomb cutting base into the bottom of the unit before putting the laser on, otherwise it won't be able to fit in there, so keep that in mind. I also have the exhaust pipe hooked up over here. Uh, like I said before, this unit came with a 3 inch, but I have replaced that with this big 4 inch to make it uh, hook up to my system up here. So now that I have the laser all set up, let's cut our first project. I need to make a light switch uh, plate cover. So let's go ahead and uh, get the design loaded up here in Lightburn and then cut that here on the Glue View Laser. I've opened up Lightburn on my computer. Let's go ahead and turn on the Glue View Laser by pressing the power button here. Looks like lights have turned on. Looking pretty good. Let's go over to the computer and see if it's uh, going to pick this up here. Now that we've gone over all the features of the laser, let's go ahead and put this to use. Open up the lid. I've got some quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that I want to cut out a file from, and it's going to be a light switch cover. So go ahead and place this down here into the bed and just get that in any arbitrary spot. You can see the cross beam right here that is going to mark where this laser is going to start cutting. So I've got it here well within the wood. Now let's move over here to the computer real quick. I've set up a couple of buttons here on the macro and one of them is called auto focus. I'm gonna press the auto focus button here. It's going to move the laser up and down until it has hit the correct focus. All right, that's where it wants to be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press the frame button and we'll see the laser head move out to show the size of our project. There we go, should be good. We'll go ahead and close the lid. I'm gonna turn on the air assist down here. All right, air assist is on. Let's go ahead and run the file, which is just this simple uh, file for a light switch cover. All right, the project has just finished up there. I'm still seeing a lot of the smoke exiting out the pipe over there. I guess that filter is doing its job, even though to me it seems like it is uh, reducing the flow. I'll have to see what we think about that. All right, let me turn off this air assist down here. It is a bit loud. All right, let's open up and see what we have. That is sucking out a pretty good bit of air over there. All right, that cut through. That's nice to see. All right, check that out. Seth Craft, main light. 
Now there's something I've noticed about this machine that seems strange. Even though the action is done, it takes forever for this to actually stop. So for instance, the project is completely finished. I can push stop here uh, and now it's done. So I've also noticed that sometimes when the laser first kicks on, you have to do an autofocus before it will do anything else. It's very strange. Now let's see if I got my dimensions right here. This is the main light switch. Yeah, I think that'll do. Uh, I just got to have some screws to go in there. Yep, holes are lined up. Looking pretty good. So essentially that will just uh, be a faceplate that goes over there to say where my main light is here in the building. I haven't screwed those down yet to get it flush, but anyway, that's just an idea I had to cover up those uh, switches. Okay, well that's my first look and first project here on the Gloofy all-in-one laser. Now whenever I first got the laser set up, everything worked except there was no output on the actual laser itself. I sent an email to the technical support and they said check this one wire that may be loose. I popped that back together and everything has worked well after that. Now I am saying that there is some kind of a delay between the laser and light burn on the computer. The action will be completed, but it's still holding up light burn, and so I'll have to push the stop button and then do the next action. So I don't know if there'll be some updates on the firmware in future versions of this, but um, just kind of a, an interesting delay between here and the computer. Other than that, it seems to cut well and engrave well, just as you would expect. If you want to check out more information on the Gloofy laser, I will have a link in the description down below. I'm Seth with Seth Craft Workshop, and I will see you in the next video.